Before I start, I want to introduce those that stand here before me. We have the widow, Diane Piagentino, Tini, Piagentini, whose husband was so callously executed. Their daughters, Deborah and Mary. The reason we do the work we do is because the strength they show each and every day, and they had the strength to show here today to speak out on behalf of their father and their husband. We have with us also Kathy Vigiano. She's a member of Survivors of the Shield. Her husband was killed on September 11th, and she too is here to lend support, representing many, many families, just like the Piagentini family. Because that's what happens when you join the NYPD. You become part of the family, and within that family, there's a very special family. But the real reason we're here today, and we ran into police officers, We ran to police officers that are young and old since yesterday, and they come up with the same word. I'm sickened by this. We're sickened by this. Young police officers say there's a bond with the public that said, if a mope kills me, you'll take care of my family, and they'll stay behind bars forever. And their eyes were opened yesterday when word came down that this vermin will walk our streets. It's disgraceful. This parole board needs to be fired. They need to be gone. They lost their goddamn humanity. When they look at a cold-blooded killer that would pump 22 rounds into a police officer who's begging for their life, saying, I have two daughters, I have a wife, please don't kill me. They lured them into their assassination with a fake aided run. They go there to help a citizen, and they gunned them down. Waverly Jones dropped and was killed instantaneously. Officer Piagentini, mortally wounded, begged for his life. And this animal took his weapon and pumped 22 rounds into him. One, two, three, four. If you've ever shot a gun, you know how difficult that is. They are evil. You cannot take evil out of a person. To say that we shouldn't look at just the crime, but look how the mope lived their life in prison. It's easy to live a good life in prison when we're all feeding them. We're all putting them to school. Correction officers are on their left and their right to make sure they towed a line. So to take into consideration how they lived, more importantly than how our police officer died, but more importantly than that, how their families had to live with that loss. Family moments. Family moments that are important to every one of us, he was not there. Mrs. Piagentini had to become the mother, the father, the coach, the leader in the Girl Scouts. You name it, this woman did it. Not because she wanted to, because she had to. To say that you should let this animal onto the streets is disgraceful. Even in this progressive world we live now, the law says life without the possibility of parole. Was Officer Piagentini's life less important than a police officer's life now? It's not, and we know the answer to that question. These commissioners need to be canned. They need to be gone. They've lost the vision of what's right and what's wrong. And this decision is wrong. But what scares these police officers and everyone that has a shield in their pocket the most is that between April and June, Bottoms is up for parole. Every elected leader is responsible that allowed these changes to happen. 
They allowed this vermin to walk the streets. They should hold their heads in shame. To the parole commissioners, look into their eyes. Don't look at the paper. Ask them how they survived. Because I know when you look into this killer's eyes, you see evil. I believe in evil. These men are evil. The only thing that brings us any solace is that one of them died in prison. They all should have died in prison. So today, what I do today is I tell every police officer that patrols our streets, get ready. A cop killer who pumped 22 rounds into a hero police officer will walk among us. They did it then, and they'll do it now. There was no remorse. He still calls himself a political prisoner. He's not sorry. He's just an actor. He's a bad actor in his entire life. So our police officers, be extra vigilant. To this mope who may celebrate soon, know this, that there's 40,000 New York City police officers. There's hundreds of thousands of law enforcement officers. Wherever he lands, we'll be watching. He's not going to walk the straight and narrow, and we're going to get you. We don't care why you're behind bars. We just care that you are behind bars. It's every police officer's honor, and it's my privilege to introduce Diane Piagentini, the widow and her family, along with police officers, that keeps our hero's memory alive and fought so long to do just that. Diane. I just want to make sure that I okay. thank you Patty for everything that you've said he has voiced everything that I could have said and everything that I have ever thought of he has said it so eloquently and the department and all the police, of, police officers have been there for us. I'm going to start out with, we've been betrayed. Letting a cop killer out of prison is a betrayal to police officers who are lives on the line now. It is a betrayal to the citizens of the United States to let killers out among us to kill again. I believe Herman Bell hasn't changed. None of what he said or did back in the 70s has left him. He is an assassin. Yesterday was a sad and shocking day for us as a family and the police officers that protect and serve New York. The parole board has chosen to release one of the most dangerous criminals of our time, Herman Bell, and Anthony Bottom, who comes up for parole in June. They are calculated bank robbers, bombings in California, and plan the killing of police officers across the United States, all in the name of the Black Liberation Army, politics. In the end, they took the lives of two police officers answering a call for help in the projects. They sat in wait, one resting on the hood of their car, till Joe and Waverly came out of the building and started to walk to their patrol car. Bell and Bottom walked up behind them, behind them, no less, and repeatedly shot Joe and Waverly. There were 22 bullet holes in my husband's body when the shooting was over. I'm also going to add that he is also involved in the ki killing of Sergeant Young in California, and there a bomb was used. 
Think about that. Put yourselves in our shoes just for a minute. Would you want these men ever released from prison? Apparently, the parole board did do that. Their only interest was in whether Herman Bell was rehabilitated. Had they read all of the material that was sent to them and our victim impact statement, they would have read the words that Herman Bell and Anthony Bottom spoke at their sentencing. There will be no rehabilitation for us. If we get out, we will do it again. Think about that when April 17th comes and he is released. Also, the judge in the original sentencing said that if he could, he would give them the electric chair. And the parole board didn't even read that. Herman Bell only started to admit his heinous crime in 2012. Think of all the years that he denied what he did. Oh, it was politics. It was a sign of the time, making all these, excuse, these excuses. This is an educated man. He was educated in California. He knew what he was doing. He knew the crimes that he was committing. It's now 2018, and he has found a way to make the parole board think that he is rehabilitated. Do you really believe that? I don't. Herman Bell and Anthony Bottom should have been given the death penalty or life without parole for their most barbaric and heinous crime against police officers. They were assassinated only because they wore the blue uniform. No other reason, just because they wore blue. What pains me today is that this decision has put a bullseye on every officer that serves this city and this country. Someone can kill an officer of the law and eventually get out of prison. This sets a precedent. This decision by the parole board, and I'm going to name the commissioners so that you all know who did what. Otis, Commissioner Otis Cruz and Commissioner Carol Shapiro, they should be fired. The only member of the board that did not agree was Commissioner, I hope I say her name properly, Demas Venus. And I applaud her steadfastness in denying parole. Take out your pens and paper. Make them open a written letter, not a convenient email. We need letters, hundreds of letters, sent to Go Governor Cuomo and the two named commissioners. They should be, they should need to open those envelopes and read the outrage to this decision. For the first time, when I stood at the 3-2, where Joe and Waverly served, I said that I would be there, that I would be there fighting to keep them in prison. I kept my word. It is a shame that the parole board could not see the danger in letting Herman Bell free on parole. Every two years, we as a family, my daughters, Deborah and Mary, have fought to keep these killers, Herman Bell and Anthony Bottom, behind bars. They should have received the death penalty or life without parole. I firmly believe that any person who kills a police officer should spend the rest of his or her life behind bars. Parole should always, always be denied. This decision has dealt a blow for law and order all around our country. Write those letters to the governor. Show him that we are law-abiding citizens. We'll not, we will not stand for this. Ask for the firing of Commissioner Cruz and Commissioner Carol Sapiro. I'd just like to take a minute and also read um, a note from Peter King, Commissioner Peter King. Um, he has been wonderful. He has been in contact with my daughter and with my son-in-law. 
it is absolute, Peter King said, it's absolutely disgraceful that Herman Bell, the convicted killer of hero cops Joseph Piagentini and Weverly Jones, is being paroled. My father was in the NYPD when officers Piagentini and Jones were murdered. I remember how devastated he and all New Yorkers, all New Yorkers, it wasn't just the police department, it was everybody in New York, how they were just devastated by these cold-blooded, the cold-blooded murder of these brave police officers. This is a terrible injustice. How can they parole Herman Bell? There's another thing I would like to, uh, this is a, a letter that was sent to uh, Senator Boyle. And it says, perhaps if the state Senate passed a resolution urging Governor Cuomo and or the parole board to reverse, to reverse their outrageous decision. Governor Cuomo and the parole board will do what Diane asked and reverse this decision that not only endangers police officers, but it also endangers the public. And you don't seem to realize you all are the public. You are the citizens. You are the people that the men in blue are sworn to protect. And it's up to you to get out there, write those letters, get this de decision reversed, or what we're going to see are assassinators, terrorizers from the 70s being let out of jail. We still have Joanne Chesimod in Cuba. Nobody's been able to bring her back and have her stand trial. So what this parole board has done is an injustice. It's an injustice to you, it's injustice to me, and it's injustice to my husband especially. My husband has not received justice. We have spent a lifetime without him. I have two grandchildren that will never know him, four and six. What am I gonna tell them when they eventually ask, what happened, Grandma? What happened to our grandpa? I can't explain this away. This should never, never have happened. When bottom comes up for parole, you must be there. You must stand up and say, deny parole. Thank you. Questions? <clears throat> Questions? Uh, do you think this was purely a political decision and also as a secondary question? There was some publicity this past fall that Herman Bell was beaten up by a corrections officer. The corrections officer got suspended. Do you think that played any role in this decision? This is pure politics. As you've seen on social media, they tried to make this mope uh, a hero, a folk hero. He's not a hero. He's a murderer. If they'll kill a New York City police officer, they'll kill anyone. What I think is so terrible about this decision is that folks in those neighborhoods, regardless of what we look at, look like, do not want killers on their streets. This decision does not speak for the citizens in our neighborhoods. It just doesn't. They think this is outrageous. Our phones have been ringing off the hook from the public, the public, saying this cannot stand. So my question is, who are the parole commissioners speaking for? So is it politics? Yes. So who gains politically? Good question. One of the things I talk about is the progressive movement that's going on, but the progressive movement of the time, if a cop gets killed today, life without the possibility of parole. But let's bring it to modern times. These assassinations haven't stopped for New York City police officers. Remember just a few short years ago when police officer Ramos and Lou were assassinated in Brooklyn. Remember the crowds that showed up at that Woodhull Hospital. Think of the people that showed up at that funeral. Think of the tears and the support that we got. What would happen if we said that mope took his own life? He saved us the job. But what would we say if he did go to prison? Would we say it's okay to release him? So remember the pain and sorrow and tears we felt in 2015? They felt it for all those years. So to let this animal out 
is like letting the assassin of Ramos and Lou on the street. Let us never forget the years have changed. The colors of our shirts may have changed, but the heart of a police officer has always been the same. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for covering. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I apologize. Ahead, no worries. What, what do you think um, the reality is that they will be fired, that they will be removed? I mean, I know you're very passionate about it, but what's the reality? This is where we need the help, as Diane said. We need the help of the public to say you don't speak for us. They're politically elected. They're politically appointed. They need to lose their job for the same reason. The people need to say this cannot stand and it has to stop. And we have a double job right now. We have the job of reversing this and stopping the next. I have to clarify one thing. Yes, ma'am. Everyone, I mean, it's been in the paper, it's been on TV. Yes. They're saying that Bell is the one who physically took the gun and completed the job. Is that, did he admit that? We can get the exact details, but the way we look at it is if you go to a scene, you say it's our job to take down our former government and we'll kill the symbol of that government, New York City police officers. I don't care if you pulled the trigger. I don't care if you drove the car. I don't care if you held a goddamn coffee for the person. You killed a New York City police officer. The only difference is one may have pulled the trigger, one may have not. The soul and the darkness of their hearts were exactly the same. They wanted to kill a cop, and they did. Yes, ma'am. You good? No, no. Oh, good. Again, thanks very much for covering this. We do need your help. Yes, sir. No, no worries. Uh, the mayor just said on the Herman Bell parole, the mayor just said, quote, I'm very troubled by it. This was a premeditated killing of a police officer. That should be life in prison, period. Help us stop it. Help us reverse it. Can it be reversed? We are going to look through every process and procedure and challenge that we possibly can. I don't have the answer. But if the public speaks, anything can happen. Well, we need you to help us make that anything happen. We need his help to stop this as well. His voice, his, buddy, uh, his bully pulpit, reach out and call for the firing of these commissioners who have lost their soul. He's That's what we need. He's part of the progressive movement. So That's right. Change his mind. When you are look you, down at, the, at a, a New York City police officer laying in the street, we've had cops killed in his term. When you look at the family, do you think the person that did it should walk the streets? I don't think he believes that. Politics aside, if they'll kill us, they'll kill you. If they'll kill a cop, they'll kill a politician. It may, it is not ideology. This is right and wrong. So you're not surprised at his response today? I'm not surprised by his response. We need his help to get it done. Let's do it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.